Lecture 22, Infinitesimal and Finite Strain Infinitesimal strain means very small strain, less than 1%. When strains are that small, the initial and final coordinates are almost the same, and, for example, the displacement gradients in the undeformed or deformed configuration are almost the same. Infinitesimal strain is important in a number of fields, perhaps most notably in geophysics and seismology, where the deformations produced by the propagating seismic waves are very small in comparison to the distances traveled by the waves. Let's look at the displacement gradient tensor, E. This tensor, as any asymmetric tensor, can be expressed as the sum of a symmetric tensor and an antisymmetric tensor. The symmetric tensor, epsilon, is the infinitesimal strain tensor, and it is equal to this equation. The antisymmetric tensor, omega, is the infinitesimal rotation tensor, and it is equal to this equation. The expansion of these formulas looks like this. The infinitesimal strain, epsilon, is a symmetric tensor. The principal axes of this tensor are the axes of the infinitesimal strain ellipsoid. The diagonal elements of the tensor are elongations along the coordinate axes, and the non-diagonal elements are half the shear strain. The infinitesimal rotation tensor is an antisymmetric tensor. We can compute from this tensor the rotation axis, and the amount of rotation. This summarizes the mathematics of infinitesimal strain. Finite strain are strains larger than 1%. When strains are this large, we can no longer assume that the initial and final states are identical. Therefore, we need to go back to our four measures of deformation, as described in this table. The mathematics of finite strain is more difficult than the mathematics of infinitesimal strain. We can define finite strain tensors as function of the displacement gradients in the undeformed or deformed states. These are called the Lagrangian and Eulerian strain tensors, respectively. Note that the difference of these finite strain tensors with respect to the infinitesimal strain tensor is the third term in these equations. We can also define deformation tensors as function of the coordinate transformations in the undeformed or deformed states. These are called the Green and Cauchy deformation tensors, respectively. The finite strain tensors and deformation tensors are symmetrical tensors. They are related by these formulas. Delta, i, j, is the Kronecker delta, a function that is 1 if, i, is equal to, j, or 0 otherwise. If the coordinate axes are parallel to the principal axes of these symmetric tensors, the principal quadratic elongations are equal to the diagonal elements of the green deformation tensor, and also to 1 plus 2 the diagonal elements of the Lagrangian finite strain tensor. Likewise, the inverse of the principal quadratic elongations are equal to the diagonal elements of the Cauchy deformation tensor, and also to 1 minus 2 the diagonal elements of the Eulerian strain tensor. Thus finite strain tensors and deformation tensors contain exchangeable information, and one just needs to determine one in either the undeformed or deformed state, to estimate the strain. Let's use some examples to make this more clear. Let's start with the simplest example. No deformation. In this case, the displacement equations and coordinate transformations are like these, with reference to the initial or final states. The displacements are zero, and the initial and final coordinates are the same. The displacement gradients are zero, and the deformation gradients are equal to the identity matrix. This is either for the initial or final state. Finally, the finite strain tensors are zero, and the deformation tensors are equal to the identity matrix. This is either for the initial or final state. Now let's look at rigid body deformation, specifically translation. The displacements are equal to the components of the translation vector along the axis, and the final coordinates are equal to the initial coordinates plus the translation, and vice versa. However, the displacement gradients are still zero, and the deformation gradients are equal to the identity matrix.
This is also the case for the finite strain tensors and the deformation tensors. Let's continue with rigid body deformation, but now rotation. The displacement equations and coordinate transformations are more complicated. As well as the displacement gradients and deformation gradients, which are no longer zeros, or the identity matrix. However, the finite strain tensors are zero, and the deformation tensors are equal to the identity matrix. This makes sense, since rotation does not involve strain. Now, let's look at the case of compaction, or shortening along the vertical axis, x3. These are the displacement equations and coordinate transformations. Note that the displacements are along the vertical axis x3, and the coordinates get transformed along that axis as well. These are the displacement gradients and deformation gradients. Again, the most interesting terms are along the axis x3. And these are the finite strain tensors, and the deformation tensors. For this case, the stretch along the axis x3 is 0.5. Therefore, this term in the green deformation tensor is the quadratic elongation. And this term in the Cauchy deformation tensor is the inverse of the quadratic elongation. This is the most complicated example. The stretching is oblique to the axes x2 and x3. The equations are rather complicated, but one thing to note is that there is no strain along the axis x1. This is called plane strain, since all the strain is in the plane defined by the axes x2 and x3. Finite strain can be visualized as the sum of a great number of very small, infinitesimal strains. Therefore, at any stage of the deformation, there are two strain ellipses that represent the strain of the rock. The finite strain ellipse, which represents the total deformation from the beginning up until the present. And the infinitesimal strain ellipse, which represents the strain the particles will feel in the next instant of deformation. Considering this, we can describe the deformation as coaxial or non-coaxial. Coaxial deformation means that the axes of the finite and infinitesimal strain ellipses are parallel. Non-coaxial deformation means that the axes of the finite and infinitesimal strain ellipses are not parallel. These terms should not be confused with rotational or non-rotational deformation, which refer to just the finite strain. Rotational deformation means that the axes of the finite strain ellipse are not parallel to their restored configuration in the undeformed state. While non-rotational deformation means that the axes in the restored and final states are parallel. This table helps to clarify these concepts. Note that the terms non-rotational and rotational refer to finite strain, while the terms coaxial and non-coaxial refer to infinitesimal strain. For example, the deformation in the figure is non-coaxial because at some stages the axes of the finite and infinitesimal strain ellipses are not parallel, and non-rotational because the axes of the final and initial strain ellipses are parallel. Let's look at a type of non-rotational, coaxial deformation called pure shear. The square is stretched along the axis x1, shortened along the axis x3, and there is no strain along the axis x2. The big white circles in the figure are points in the initial configuration, the gray circles are those points in the final configuration, and the small white circles are the same points at intermediate stages of the deformation. The coordinate transformation that describes this deformation is this, where S1 and S3 are the stretches along the X1 and X3 axes, respectively. At any stage of the deformation, the finite and infinitesimal strain ellipses, the lines of no finite elongation F, L, S, and the lines of no infinitesimal elongation I, L, S, define three zones. Zone 1 are lines that have lengthened and will continue lengthening. Zone 3 are lines that have shortened and will continue shortening. And Zone 2 are lines that have shortened but will get longer in the next increment. This figure shows the angle that the long axis of the strain ellipse makes with respect to the axis x1 throughout the deformation. And you can see this angle is always zero. This is a non-rotational, 
coaxial deformation. Now let's look at a rotational, non-coaxial deformation, namely simple shear. In this case we apply shear strain along the x1 axis, and there is no strain along the x2 axis. The coordinate transformation that describes this deformation is this, where gamma is the applied shear strain. The finite and infinitesimal strain ellipses and their lines of no elongation define three zones of deformation. Zone 1 are lines that have lengthened and will continue lengthening. Zone 3 are lines that have shortened and will continue shortening. And zone 2 are lines that have shortened but will get longer in the next increment of deformation. Note that one of the lines of no infinitesimal elongation or no finite elongation is parallel to the direction of shear, x1. Lines parallel to the direction of shear don't change in length throughout the deformation. And this figure shows the angle that the long axis of the ellipse makes with x1 throughout the deformation. At the start of the deformation, the long axis of the strain ellipse is at 45 degrees from the shear direction, x1. This is very important. For simple shear, the long axis of the infinitesimal strain ellipse is always at 45 degrees from the shear direction. Then, the strain ellipse rotates to become more parallel to x1. At the end of the deformation, the long axis of the ellipse makes an angle of about 20 degrees with the shear direction. Simple shear is a rotational, non-coaxial deformation. Finally, let's consider multiple deformations. If the strains are infinitesimal, the total strain is the sum of the different strain events. However, if the strains are large, the total strain is no longer the sum of the different strain events. There is an additional term which is not commutative. Therefore, for finite strains we must know the order in which the deformation occurs. This figure illustrates that. Horizontal stretch of 2, followed by 45 degrees rotation, is not the same that 45 degrees rotation followed by a horizontal stretch of 2. For finite strains, we must know the order in which the deformation occurs. To learn more about this topic, read Chapter 2 of Fossen and these sections from our online computational geosciences resource. And answer these questions.